The 2006 Nancy Myers film, The Holiday, is one of my favorite Christmas movies of all time. This movie has the ability to both romanticize life in the English countryside and Los Angeles to the same degree, it has a star-studded cast full of what I think are amazing performances, including one of Jack Black's only rom-com features, which we should talk more about. One of the most important aspects of Nancy Myers' films that stick with people throughout the years are the sets and the design and the overall feeling that the movie can bring you. Nancy Myers has even inspired a modern style aesthetic called Coastal Grandmother. The style focuses on neutrals, warm colors and creams in comfortable silhouettes but in classic styles as well, which makes The Holiday a perfect candidate for another cast and stitches videos. In these videos, I like to take a look at characters and popular culture and let you know what I would knit for them. Because after all, this is a knitting channel. But first, a word from our sponsor, Book of the Month. I'm so excited to be working with Book of the Month for the month of December. Book of the Month is a monthly subscription service which gives you access to new releases and emerging new authors. Book of the Month has also just released an audiobook option and that's really exciting to hear as a knitter. I know a lot of fellow knitters like to listen to audiobooks as they're knitting to keep them company. I really enjoy that Book of the Month helps me decide which books I'd like to read next. They have a team of editors that curates a list each month for subscribers to pick from. It also is a great opportunity if you're in a reading rut to help you explore new genres. First book that I received this month is A Winter in New York by Josie Silver. The book is about a British expat living in Manhattan and one day while she's in Little Italy with her best friend she finds a gelato shop that has the exact same recipe as her mom's gelato. Love and mystery ensue and I've already started this one and can't wait to see how it ends. I love that it's a seasonal fit being a book that takes place only in the winter. The next book I got was an add-on this month and this is Gwen and Art are not in love. All I have to say about this book is gay Camelot love story. I'm so interested. So Gwen and Art are two noble people in Camelot after the reign of King Arthur and they're to be wed. However, they both have romantic interests that lay, let's say, elsewhere. Seems like a really fun read, and I love that it's a young adult novel focused on gay and queer stories. Right now, you can get your first book for $5 with the code SWEATER, which in this economy, I think is a great deal. I also think this would be a great holiday gift. It takes the pressure off of you for having to select a book someone would like, and it helps whoever you're giving it to select some new titles to explore. So thanks again to Book of the Month for sponsoring this video. So if you've never seen this movie, Please just go watch it. It's fantastic. It follows Iris Simpkins, who's a journalist in London, and Amanda Woods, who is a movie trailer producer in Los Angeles. Iris soon learns that her kind of on and off again boy toy is engaged and he didn't even bother to tell her. And Amanda finds out that her boyfriend is cheating on her with his secretary. They both decide that they need to get away for the holidays and end up doing a home exchange. Amanda leaves her mansion in LA for a cozy cottage in the English countryside. Iris escapes the cold, snowy London weather for Amanda's beautiful LA mansion. While they're there, Amanda meets Iris's brother Graham, played by Jude Law, total mega hottie. They start to fall in love. While Iris is in LA, she meets Amanda's neighbor, Arthur Abbott, who is a former screenwriter and a film composer, Miles, who's played by Jack Black. Perfect film, 10 out of 10. I have a ton of sweater items, accessory items that I would knit for both Cameron Diaz's and Kate Winslet's characters, and then a few other honorable mentions. Amanda and Iris both anchor this movie as main characters, but also stylistically, especially because the majority of the movies are set within their homes themselves. Starting with Amanda Woods, Cameron Diaz's character. She lives in a beautiful Los Angeles mansion. Although it is much larger than Iris's Ingleside cottage, you still wanna be around the table at Iris's Hanukkah dinner, or sipping Pinot Grigio on the couch with her or watching movies with her in the movie room that has thousands of DVDs stacked into the walls. This is the magic of Nancy Myers to make things seem sophisticated but warm and lived in at the same time. That is part of the large appeal of her set design, her broader aesthetic overall. So let's talk about Amanda Woods. I just watched this movie a few nights ago and what stuck out to me is the two main characters 
don't have dissimilar styles. They both lean heavily on very neutral color palettes. However, there, there are their slight differences, which we'll get into. The most iconic moments and images from the holiday are when Amanda first gets to the cottage in Surrey and she's all bundled up in cable knit cardigans and fingerless mitts and a scarf and a hat. It just makes you wanna be right there with her in that small little cottage by the fire, having a glass of wine or a glass of brandy with Jude Law. Doesn't take me much to want that anyway. One of the first things I wanted to pick out for Amanda was a comfortable cardigan. You get the sense that she doesn't normally wear this level of knitwear because she lives in LA and it's cold all the time. Her winter clothes are like an LA take on what winter clothes are and maybe not necessarily what people wear day to day to stay warm. First thing that I have for her is a long, past the waist cardigan called the Edith cardigan by Pam Allen. I know that Whitney of Knitted by Whitney recently knit this cardigan and it came to mind when thinking of Amanda in her pink cardigan talking to Jude Law, I believe the morning after something happened. This cardigan has deep pockets, have buttons necessarily, but the button bands have this really gorgeous kind of graphic ribbing that also you can add as a feature in the back of the cardigan as well. I feel like knit up in a really warm, kind of scrumptious wool. It'd be the perfect thing to be bundled up in next to a fire. We're moving on to the iconic white cable knit sweater that she's wearing when she's singing Mr. Brightside and Jude Law comes to the cottage for the first time. I actually found someone on Reddit who had knit this sweater and had cited Cameron Diaz and the Holiday as their inspiration. And this is the Fireside Sweater by Amber Allison. The project pictures are in kind of a dark green color, but I'll also share the Reddit pictures as well. When it's knit in white, you can really see the resemblance with the sweater in the movie. It is an Aaron White sweater. It has these really bold, big graphic cables. I think are actually kind of coming back as a trend. This cardigan is like Amanda Woods' take on what English people wear in the countryside. She's like, big graphic Aaron cardigan. Done. Check. The fireside sweater is a very good, if not like, most exact dupe of her sweater. And the other sweater I found that was more inspired by that original cable knit sweater is the cable wrap cardigan by Sardar. It's more so an interpretation of that original sweater. I really like that it is a wrap and it comes with a belt. Although this isn't something that I think was distinctly featured in this movie, it feels very similar to sweaters I think that you would find being sold in stores at that time. The movie came out in around 2006. The cables are a bit smaller because it is a DK weight. So it gives a very luxurious feeling that Amanda Woods would be attracted to without being, you know, too ostentatious. Again, balancing that feeling of warm sophistication. Aside from a few of the more like, iconic outfits you think of when you think of these movies, and maybe not so frequently cited scene, they're wearing very classic knits and very simple silhouettes, but what look like luxurious fibers. Cashmere or maybe even mohair or just like even just 100% wool sweaters, which feel like they're becoming a luxury nowadays. Something that feels like a modern take on the cream turtleneck sweater we see Amanda wearing in one of the scenes is the Mohair Gallant Sweater by Kadri. And this is just a very simple, like funnel-necked turtleneck sweater. Sometimes in these pattern inspiration videos, less is more. At the same time, these are just supposedly normal people. And you would think they would have maybe a normal sweater like this. It's very Nancy Myers esque to have these very simple silhouettes, but in kind of rich textures that bring that warmth to the screen. And I think this mohair sweater would fit that perfectly in like a rich cream or maybe even a gray. Next few items I have are winter accessories. I would be remiss if I did not use this opportunity to highlight some accessory patterns that I think would go perfectly for this movie. The first accessory that I have for Amanda is the Literally Scarf by Martina Bem. Photos for this on the project page on Ravelry are very bright and vibrant colors, which don't necessarily fit into the color stories of the characters, in my opinion. The original iconic scene, Amanda is wearing a pastel scarf, and I think knitting up this chevron scarf in light pastels, in creams, in purples, light greens, pinks, maybe even blues, would be a very fun interpretation of that original striped striped scarf. And I also know that Chevron was a very popular print in the early 2000s. Next thing that I have for her are 
the Pico Hat and Hand Warmers by Pearl Soho. And these are just a very simple hat and hand warmer set with a Pico Edge. I think out Amanda's style, you see very feminine touches. And I think a Pico Edge is a very subtle but on the nose nod to more feminine aspects. And the last one, I had to include these because I remember these being such a big <laughs> part of my life when I was younger around this time. And those are convertible mittens. I don't think they're as popular anymore. I just remember there was a time like at all of the basically mall stores that you would go to like Abercrombie, American Eagle, Aeropostale, they would all have the convertible mittens. So it'd be fingerless mitts, but with a a compartment on top that you can pull over your mittens. They probably still make them today, but I, I have a very visceral memory of them kind of in this time frame in the early 2000s. And there is a free pattern on Ravelry called Chili Podsters by Glenna C. And this is exactly what I just described. Each finger has slots and you can even knit a separate compartment for your thumb. I know that some you would either have your thumb fully covered and you couldn't take it out, but this one looks like you can. So. Amanda Woods would be able to send Blackberry messages back in the day uh, with these convertible gloves. Fire Simpkins comes from the most perfect, beautiful cottage on a hill. It is basically like every American's romanticization of what living in the English countryside is like. She has a wood burning fireplace, cozy loft bedroom, a huge collection of CDs, a adorable little dog, and she so happens to have a very hot brother. You see these women wearing pretty similar color stories, a lot of creams and winter whites, and some pops of color here and there, maybe like teals or deep blues or light pinks. Main distinction of these women is that Amanda is this like high powered, she's this high powered girl boss from LA. It's a little more, I think, sexiness to her style. Iris is this woman who's been pining over this man for years. Although she has a very feminine style, it's a little bit more subdued than Amanda. See Iris in a lot of very light cardigans. She is in LA, so she's not wearing like the heavy knitwear that uh, Karen Diaz is wearing. See her in a lot of like light lacy cardigans, kind of those like light dusters. I think people would throw over their clothes a lot for outfits in the early 2000s. These first two sweaters that I have for her are kind of like a good and better option. So the first is the Kutar wrap cardigan by Sari Nordland. I picked a wrap style because in earlier scenes she is seen wearing a wrap dress which Amanda Woods opens the closet and says oh cute dress. It was also a very popular style during the time so I don't think we actually explicitly see her in a wrap cardigan but I do feel like it is something that she would wear. The Kutar cardigan is a DK weight cardigan knit with a wool and a mohair with two again lace bands that go down the front. I felt like this was a good nod to Iris and then I found something that I feel like fit even better to the lacy almost gauzy sweaters that we see her in. The next one is the Zosia wrap by Alexandra of Vert and Rose Knitting. This one doesn't have any wool in it and it's only knit in brushed alpaca so it has that very fluffy light feeling that you see in some of the sweaters that Iris wears throughout the movie. It also has some lace detailing and feels like a more modern take of the sweaters that we see Iris in and it also has this like big beautiful graphic bow which I really love as a design element on this sweater. Along the lines of just having a cozy basic staple for Iris, I would put her in the Dartmoor sweater v-neck by Kadri. This is just a very simple drop shoulder v-neck sweater. I would even bring the v-neck up a little bit more. It looks like in the scene where she's IMing, which oh, I miss IMing, <laughs> in which she's IMing Amanda, she's wearing almost like a menswear sweater. It just looks very comfortable and cozy. I feel like I have a sweater like that that I like to wear around the house almost as a sweatshirt. This v-neck would be a good option for her maybe knit in a, a really nice rustic wool, maybe even like a one ply, like a single ply that like felt over time. That could be very nice for her. As far as knit accessory goes, you don't really see her in any because she is in LA in the winter and it's not 
supposedly that cold in LA in the winter. However, you do see her, I think, in the very beginning come in wearing a scarf. And I do know that she's wearing a scarf, of course, when she's back home in Surrey. Another fun, colorful scarf for her would be the Stripey Tube Scarf by Pearl Soho. It's a scarf knit in, around, knit in the round that uses marling. And I think there's a lot of different color options you could go here for Iris but this might be something that she cozies up with maybe back at home when she's in England. I really like the different options this can go and that the fact that it is knit in the round makes it like double-sided and extra cozy and layery. Really nails the Nancy Myers warmth and with the right color palette, I think you could also hit that sophistication button as well. So those were, as Arthur would call them, the leading ladies of the movie. I do have one sweater picked out for each man the knitwear and the outfits for the men i think are just like less noticeable they're less iconic it happens right <laughs> although jude law looks fine in basically every scene he's usually wearing a button-down shirt there is one scene where he was wearing a crew neck sweater over a button-down shirt there are a bunch of different options for raglan sweaters you can knit for men one option is the hanslim sweater by petite knit this is a dk wet DK weight sweater knit in Santa Scar Pure Gint. I just know Graham has a bunch of cashmere in his closet. He just looks like a cashmere guy. He doesn't seem like someone who would wear something very like thick and wooly. That doesn't really seem his vibe. Again, he's more sophisticated or that's the vibe that we're supposed to get from him. He wears kind of very fitted clothing. Everything's very well tailored to his body, which I'm okay with. I think you're okay with. <laughs> Um, and so I would maybe even knit her something in a lighter gauge than this, a fingering weight gauge, just something very simple, sleek, modern, sophisticated for a male character in a Nancy Myers film. There's also only one scene where Iris's love interest, Miles, played by Jack Black, is wearing a sweater. It is a, when they're in the sushi restaurant, and it is a quarter zip sweater that has some kind of ribbing. It's a little hard to tell since it's a dark color. I picked out the Lenark sweater by Rebecca Klo, also known as the Crea Bea. I love this sweater. It looks so cozy. I would just love to knit it. This is a half fisherman's rib sweater, so it gives you that really like nice squishy texture. I've never knit in that before, um, but I think this would match Jack Black's subdued style and vibe in this movie as well. Can we just take a moment for how cute Jack Black is in this movie? This is a movie that like really makes you be like, is Jack Black cute? And it makes me sad that Jack Black wasn't in any more rom-coms. Although he does say very frequently that School of Rock was like his most favorite movie that he's ever filmed. And that's also one of my top 10 favorites. I can quote probably half of it to you right now. Lastly, for Arthur Abbott, who is the 90-year-old screenwriter that Iris meets in Amanda's neighborhood and then eventually helps have him up and walking. Is Iris somehow an occupational therapist? I don't know. She rehabs this elderly man and helps him walk on stage to receive an award. And then again, one scene where she's convincing him to go to the award ceremony, he's wearing a cable knit sweater with a shawl cardigan. And that's exactly what I would knit for Arthur Abbott. And one that I found is the Porter sweater by Megan Babin. It has Aaron cable designs with a beautiful shawl fold over collar just a very classic Aaron cardigan he's a classic man he had beautiful mid-century furniture in his apartment I think this would complement him nicely lastly there are two other characters you may have forgotten but when we see them for the first time they are both wearing knitwear and those are Graham's daughters Sophie and Olivia throughout the movie Jude Law keeps getting calls from these mysterious women oh my goodness Sophie oh Amanda looks at his caller ID. Oh no, Olivia's calling him. They were his daughters and he just didn't tell you, which was kind of a red flag, but it, he was just so charming and hot. We kind of skated right past it. If I was Amanda or Iris and I knew how to knit and I wanted to make Sophie and Olivia something for Christmas, I would make them the kids' party cardigan, which is this just adorable color work, fair aisle cardigan. I think that matches I think it was Sophie, the oldest one, what she was wearing um, when we meet her. And I think it'd just be darling. You could knit in Christmas colors for them. They could wear this, sit in their tent, and ask Cameron Diaz about lipstick. Also have huge tent envy from this movie. Just everything that Nancy Myers does is so cozy and warm and really just transports you, which 
It just makes it one of my favorite Christmas movies. That's all that I have for this episode of Cast in Stitches. I hope you liked it. Let me know what you think. Did I get any wrong? Are there any kind of key style moments that I missed? What items would you knit for these characters? Let me know if you'd like to see any other shows or movies on this series. Thanks for watching and I'll see y'all soon. Bye!